Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech University, and this is the second video of a two-part series on linearity. In the first video, I defined linearity and went through an example of a linear system. And in this one, we're going to look at a nonlinear system, actually a few different nonlinear systems. So first, recall the state input output pair notation. We've used that quite a bit now, but just one more time. So if we have the initial state at some time t0, and we know the input to the dynamic system, u of t, for all t greater than or equal to t0, then we can compute y of t for all t greater than or equal to t0. Well, now let's look at an example of a nonlinear system. So let's say we have x dot is equal to x squared. And I'll be very verbose about this for now. I might start using some abbreviations or shortcut notation a little bit later. And there's our initial state. So we have a couple things going on here. There's a nonlinear term right there, as it turns out. And we also have time varying uh, coefficients all the way around. And let's say that the output for the system is y of t equals x of t, like so. Now it turns out that this nonlinear differential equation has a closed form solution. And in particular, y of t, which is equal to x of t, is equal to x0 t squared divided by t0 squared minus x0 times the quantity t minus t0. Well, now let's go ahead and look at uh, homogeneity and additivity and see if it satisfies either of those two properties. So here's homogeneity. Uh, if we have alpha, some scalar constant, times x t0, and alpha times u of t. And the question is, does that give us alpha times y of t? where y of t is the output due to the initial state x and the input u. So here's our check. What we'll do is just take this solution and replace every occurrence of x0 with alpha times x0. Now notice that there's no u of t in this particular example, so we really don't have to worry about that part of it. But I'll keep writing it just to be consistent. So here we go. Alpha x0 times t squared divided by t0 squared minus alpha x0 times the quantity t minus t0. And the question is, is that equal to alpha times the quantity x0 t squared t0 squared minus x0 t minus t0. And that is a 2 right there. Well, the numerators look fine alpha times x0 times t squared, but the denominator is no way, right? The denominator on this side doesn't have an alpha in it. This one does. There's no way that those two things are equal. So homogeneity does not hold, and we can conclude that the system is not linear. That is, it's nonlinear. But just for fun, let's go ahead and check additivity also. So for additivity, what we'll do is consider three cases. We did this in the first video in pretty much the same way. And what I'm going to do is define xA as one of my cases, and ua, even though we really don't have any ua, and that gives ya. And then the second case is xB at t0, and we have a ub, and that gives yb. And then the third case is xA t0 plus xb t0 and ua plus uv and that gives yc and so the check the thing that we're going to investigate to see if additivity is satisfied is ya plus yb equal to yc so let's just go ahead and plug these quantities right into the solution that we had on the previous page 
set them equal to each other and see what happens. So here we go. If we look at the left side, we have an xa times t squared on the numerator and xb times t squared on the numerator. And sure enough, the numerators match just fine. But again, the denominators are the offending quantities. If we were to get a common denominator between those two expressions, there's no way that it's going to equal that one. So again, additivity does not hold. And that would tell us all by itself that the system is not linear. Now let's do another example and this one is a little bit different. In some sense it's a little bit vague. That is our input is just going to be some function f of u and we'll go ahead and use an integrating factor to solve. And I'll abbreviate it like so to solve this first order differential equation. And our integrating factor would be e to the integral uh, of three d tau. I'm picking the three off right from there. So the integrating factor is e to the three t. So that means that the solution y equals x is equal to e to the negative three t minus t zero, x zero. So there's the initial condition piece plus e to the negative 3t, the integral from t0 to t, e to the 3 tau, f of u, d tau. And there's our solution. So now let's go ahead and check homogeneity. And again, that's alpha x t0, alpha times u. And the question is, does that give us alpha times y? Let's just go ahead and do it. We'll replace every occurrence of x0 and u in that solution with alpha times x0 and alpha times u, and then compare it to the quantity alpha times that solution y and see what we get. And here we go. Now, I got a little bit jammed up right there, but there's an alpha times u as the argument to that function f. So let's go ahead and check to see if these two sides are equal. Well, let's see. This expression, e to the negative 3, t minus t0, alpha x0, sure enough, that is the same as that one. However, this one may or may not equal, I have to do some interesting curves there, may or may not equal that one. It kind of depends on what f of u is. For instance, if f of u was equal to 7u, then yeah, those two sides are the same because I would be able to pull that alpha outside of that argument of that function. However, if, alpha of, if f of u was equal to sine of u, then what we would be faced with is sine alpha u. And is that equal to alpha sine u? And of course, it's not. And so in that case, we would conclude that the system is nonlinear. So it really depends on what f of u is. Now, here's a trick. Well, not so much a trick. It's just something that you can do. Uh, if f of u is a one-to-one -one function, then what you can do is replace f of u with, we'll call it u tilde equals f of u. And then the system would be linear. Now, what is a one-to-one -one function? Um, well, one, one way that you can assess that is if it satisfies both the uh, vertical and horizontal line tests. For instance, if we have this function, 
the, the vertical line test is you can imagine drawing a bunch of vertical lines through it. And if those vertical lines only intersect that function at one point, then we would say it satisfies the vertical line test. The horizontal line test goes like this, draw a bunch of horizontal lines. And if, it's, if it intersects the horizontal lines at only one point, then it would satisfy that test. Of course, this function, uh, f of u equals u squared. So this is u and this is f of u. I'll draw these in a little bit darker. Here we go, here's my axes does not satisfy the vertical line test. So we would say it's not one-to-one. -one. However, if we had this function, let's say it was f of u equals u cubed. So here's our u, there's our f of u. And that one indeed satisfies the vertical and horizontal line test. We'd say it's one-to-one. -one. And so if our f of u was this, we could just replace the u cubed with a u tilde, call it linear. Let's do one more example. Look at that. It's a beautiful linear dynamic system. However, there's our output. So you can imagine this thing is going to be nonlinear. But let's just go through the motions anyway. And why don't we check homogeneity? So once again, alpha x0 and alpha u needs to yield an alpha y. Now in this case, we can solve this equation for x using an integrating factor. And since this is our output y equals x squared, then we can actually write down a solution for y. It would be e to the negative 3 t minus t0, x0, plus 7, e to the negative 3t. And we'll go from t0 to t, e3 tau, u tau, e tau. And there we go. And we have to square the whole thing. So there is our expression for y. And so now here, let's do the check. So I'm just going to replace every occurrence of x0 with alpha x0, every occurrence of u of tau with alpha u tau, and then compare it to alpha times that solution. And there we have it. So now let's go ahead and evaluate these two expressions on the left and the right hand side. Well, if we look at the left hand side, we have a square here. We have a bunch of alphas in each one of those two terms. So clearly, when if you were to multiply all this out, you would get alpha squares. But if you look over here, we have none of that. Actually, all we have is alpha. So there's no way, unless alpha equals one, but of course alpha should be allowed to equal any constant. So if you let alpha equal any constant, there's no way that these two expressions can equal each other. And so we would say that this system is not linear. Or if you want to put it another way, it's nonlinear. And it's all because of the way the output is defined. The dynamic system in terms of x is perfectly linear. The only thing that makes it nonlinear is the output expression. So to summarize, we investigated three different nonlinear system examples, and we showed how to apply additivity and homogeneity to investigate linearity. And we also just scratched the surface of how to cast a nonlinear system as a linear system if it satisfies certain conditions. So once again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech University, and thanks for watching.